Oh my gosh, I am so excited to talk about today's um, scripture and to talk about how our obedience can unlock even things like healing. Okay, so I cannot wait to dive into this. Um, such a topic near and dear to my heart, um, just after God did some massive healing in my life. So anyway, if you haven't met, I'm Connie. I am a Christian woman who loves to encourage other women um, who God has healed both physically and emotionally. And I just know that he wants the same for you. So anyway, let's dive in. We're going to be talking about the woman with the blood issue. Have you heard her story? Um, if you haven't, oh my gosh, you're in for a treat. So we're going to dive in here to Luke 8, 43 through 48. So I love Luke, because Luke was a physician, so many times he has a little bit different perspective of what was going on because he sees it from the medical side, right? So here's what it says. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, 12 years she had dealt with that. Is there something in your life physically like 12 years you've dealt with this? Um, which has spent all her living upon physicians, meaning she was broke. She had used every bit of money she earned um, going from doctor to doctor to, to get um, just that healing from um, trying to get that healing and nothing had worked. Um, neither could be healed of any. So she came behind him and touched the border of his garment, so the very edge of his garment, and immediately, not tomorrow, not next week, not immediately, her issue of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? And when all of them denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, there's a multitude here. And you're asking who touched me. And Jesus said, someone touched me because I can perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not, she just couldn't hide. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him for all the people that she had touched him. And she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Man, let's dive into her story just a little bit, okay? Because I love her story. I love her story. Um, I think there's some things that we can take out of her story. First of all, when you've dealt with a chronic illness, um, for 12 years, I have. Um, man, you're, you have no hope. You have, you're exhausted. I mean, she not only had went through every bit of financial money she'd had, but even giving all of that, she still didn't have healing. How frustrating would that be? How frustrating is that? Um, it's hard enough to walk through an illness, but when you go and you don't get the answers and you don't get the answers and you don't get the answers, you just, you lose that hope. So I know that some of you guys have walked through stuff and it's been years and it's like, Connie, I have no hope. And I get that. I a hundred percent get that. And we don't hear the backstory of how did she know that Jesus was in town? How, what stories had she heard that made her even think, man, if I just touch, all I have to do is touch his garment. I don't need him to speak to me. I don't need him to lay hands on me. I don't need any of that. I just, I just want to touch the garment. Like, I wonder in her mind if, there still wasn't hope. Anybody been there? 
Like you're walking through this super hard season and you've tried everything and you're like, what else? Oh, there's this Jesus guy who, maybe if I just touch his garment, maybe, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, and dealing with the blood issue, like, I mean, that just exhausts you. <laughs> we don't really realize how much we need our blood until it's not working properly. But what made her say, okay, that's what I'm gonna go do. And then there was a multitude there were thousands of people around him. So it wasn't like she stood in the back and was like, okay, I can just touch. Like she had to like maneuver in. She had to like push her way in to be able to touch his garment. So I wanna ask a question here. What is it in your life that you have dealt with for years? Maybe it's physically, maybe it's emotionally. What is it that if you could stand before Jesus and touch his garment and have that healing, what would that be? And here's the second part of what you see in this story is like, Jesus is like, who touched me? Like, he could feel his power leave and go to that person. And everybody, like, silence. Like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And they're probably thinking to themselves, was it me? Was it me? You know, I'm close enough. Was it me? And I love, like, she came before him trembling. She didn't, like, raise her hand and be bold and say, it was me. She trembled. She came before him cautiously. And she fell to her knees, like in this place where you are just like, God, it was me. And did I do something wrong? Like, that's just kind of what I hear her saying. Like, oh my gosh, it was me that touched you. And, and did I do it wrong? And Jesus says to her, girl, your faith has healed you. And I think we can even go a word further. Your obedience has healed you. Many, many years ago, um, I was diagnosed with lupus. Um, it was wreaking havoc in my body. I mean, there just wasn't, and looking back, like, I don't think we talk about this enough in the church. Like, I can look back now, having stepped into a lot of emotional healing. Um, if you don't know my story, I had a, nar I still have a narcissistic mother who was verbally, physically abusive. And as I stepped into healing, like, I've just I've seen God do miraculous things, but I, I know, I know that I know that I know that a lot of times the things that we're dealing with emotionally can manifest themselves into physical ailments, okay? So if you're like, oh yeah, I'm dealing with that emotionally, but it doesn't affect me physically, I'm gonna call a little BS on that. It may not be in this moment, but it will at some point. That is why it's so important to be able to heal emotionally. But I'll never forget this moment. I was doing um, Beth Moore. Anybody Beth Moore fan? Uh, I was doing Beth Moore's Believing God. And in this Bible study, if you haven't done it, like it's an amazing Bible study. You can do it online. And um, that's what I was doing. And she gives you like five statements of, are you believing God for, you know, I believe that he can. I believe, like there's just these five statements that you learn throughout this Bible study. And I had just started a new church. I lived in Dallas, Texas. I went um, to this church in Carrollton. And this pastor, Dr. Kennedy, had this amazing gift of healing. And, um, and you guys, it was, this church was like out of my comfort zone. Have you ever been, have you ever been one of those churches? Um, just some of the things that they talked about. I grew up very Baptist. So, 
you know, like we didn't talk about healing. We didn't talk about tongues. We didn't talk about a lot of those things that this church in particular talked about. And so I'll never forget this day. I was, I had been doing death and life study and had went and had an MRI. And um, just to be honest, like it wasn't, wasn't a good MRI. It just wasn't. And I remember sitting, I could, I could take you back to that chair. And I was sitting there and I remember him just kind of switching the service and saying, um, we're, we're going to pray over people for healing. And I remember just sitting there and, and, and just the Holy Spirit just kind of whispering. Um, it was just this sense, it was just this, this voice that, um, not an audible voice, but this voice saying, do you want healing? And you guys, I was at a point where if I didn't get healing, I might not see another year. Like that's how bad my lupus was. And I was like, I started bargaining with God. Okay, FYI, not a good thing to do. But I started bargaining with him, you know, because these Beth Moore words were like going through my head. And I'm like, well, God, I mean, I don't need to go up there and get prayed. Like, you can do that right here. And here was my fear. Um, as people were going up, they were laying hands on them and people were like falling out. Okay. And this Baptist girl, like, I hadn't really ever, I had seen it, but I kind of thought it was fake. I kind of thought, um, a little dramatic, just, and I was like, God, I mean, I just believe that you can heal me standing right here, sitting in this chair. I believe that you can heal me. I don't think that I have to go up in front of everybody and whatever. And I remember God just like whispering, like you choose life or death today. And I was like, oh, okay. So let me tell you what I did. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Um, I just decided like, okay, God, I'll go up a little kicking and screaming. I feel like a little bit like a, you know, a toddler having a temper tantrum, but I was like, I'm going to plant my feet. And I'm not going to let him lay hands on me. Um, if God's going to do this, God's going to do this. And I'm just like going to be there. So I walked up, got in line. Never forget. He looked at me and he said, you're the one. Because he had spoken some things that I knew like were, I've had those moments where like, you know, like, God, you just spoke like directly to me. It wasn't even like, oh, nobody else even knew that. And um, he said, it's you. And I'm here to tell you, he didn't even lay hands on me. Like he just started to put his hand out and the Holy Spirit hit me like that. And I was out. And here's the amazing part of the story. I woke up, um, I kind of came to, and um, they call it slain in the spirit. If you're just brand new to this, it was the most amazing experience in my life. But I woke up, I went and had another MRI met with my medical team and you guys I'm here to tell you there was not a single bit of lupus in my body my lungs were healed my brain was healed like God healed me but here's what I know too if I had sat in my chair and kept arguing wasn't obedient you know no there wasn't a crowd that I had to push through but I still had to go in and so maybe that's you maybe you've sat here and you're like god i want healing god you're the only one who can heal this then i'm gonna say to you ask him what do i need to do to be obedient is there a church that i need to is there somebody i need to talk to is there um or do i simply need to just kind of come into you, Jesus, and say, I want healing. What is it? And you guys have put together a resource to kind of walk you through some of this. Because I don't believe that you need a church or a pastor or somebody. Many times, though, we do need somebody praying with us, in agreement with us. It's a battle when you're dealing with a physical or emotional illness. But I want you to press in a little bit. But I want you to grab that resource 
to kind of look at healing, look at all of the healings that God did in the Bible. Okay, like I've put together a ton of them. Here's what I've noticed with just as I was thinking about this, like God, Jesus would speak and people would immediately be healed. A man that was laying on a mat immediately got up and walked. A man that was blind immediately had sight. There wasn't this delay. And I think we're, we've been in this culture to where, I don't know, we're afraid. Maybe we just don't really believe it. But I think God is asking us, like, will you believe that I can heal you? That's what he's asking. And yes, I'm going to tell you what the church says. God uses that for his glory. He does, but he also uses people who have been healed for his glory. Okay? It's not just, I'm suffering for your glory, God. Like, yes, but he also uses healing to bring hope to others. So I want you to take a little bit deeper into this, to look at the healings and to really like spend some time with God and say, God, I need healing. Man, I need healing. And to look and see, like, is there some emotional things that could be causing some of this? Okay, because it's not just about, I really do believe there's an, there's an emotional tie to many of our physical illnesses. I just do. So there's some great resources in there to help you kind of look at that as a whole. Okay, so anyway, I hope, and my prayer is that Man, you're like the woman with the issue with the blood that you press into him. That you just don't say, okay, well, I'm sick. Okay, I've got this problem and I'll just leave it. You press in. God still heals. God came to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. And I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know that you are just like, can it happen, Connie? And my answer to you is God is still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's still the same. He hasn't changed. So the God that healed the woman with the blood issue can heal you. So anyway, I hope you'll grab that resource. Man, I'm just praying for your healing. Okay, and if you need to pray, put it in the comments. We are so glad to pray with you. Okay, and if you see somebody that posted, you know, post a comment and just needs prayer, like seriously, just take a minute, pray over them, pray over them. Okay, so you guys make sure that um, if you're in, in my email, you get a daily just email saying, here's the latest video, go a little bit deeper Monday through Friday. Um, but grab that resource, okay? Go a little bit deeper with God. Girl, he has a healing for you. He's ready to heal you.